Hello and welcome back to Slash Tracks season number two. Oh yeah, we're back. It's been a three month hiatus. I'm not sure if uh, seen everything, you know, the- but they're stellar. Uh, don't check stars. ours. They're perfect on Yahoo. Always, even if it's yeah, not. My word. We didn't. Uh, Donald Trump may or may not have a system. Uh, we may have learned. Who knows? We don't know. Anyway, enough with the garbage. Yeah. Uh, is it Slash Track Season 2 or Good Toes with Alex and Ryan Season 2? Did I say Slash Tracks? Yes. <laughs> okay. This is going to be an outtake. Let's start it. Let's start again. <laughs> I'm just sitting here like, do I say something now or wait till he's done? Okay. Hey, welcome back. We're finally back. The boys are back in town. Ryan is not with us uh, for the season premiere episode of Good Times with Alex and Ryan. Sans Ryan again. Season two premiere right now. We are joined by the uh, the 80s slasher librarian, your friend and mine, Mr. Josh LaRue. He's back again. Josh, welcome back, buddy. Look who's back. Back again. Yeah, just like just like the thumbnail for the YouTube episode that we're gonna we're gonna drop here in, on Wednesday. But uh you couldn't be back for a bigger episode, buddy. This is the season two premiere. People have been chomping at the bit for new good times. And we're going to bring it to him tonight, pal. Well, yeah, people have been saying, you know, that Good Times is the biggest show ever. There's nothing that's ever been bigger than it, okay? It's bigger than anything ever. So, bigger, uh, yeah. I know, it's a big deal. I couldn't agree with you more. <laughs> bigger, bigger, actually, than your hair tonight, Josh. Oh, no, it's getting there. It's a, it's the audience. hair out. If the audience is just listening to the to the like the audio version of the episode on like Spotify or iTunes and not watching us on YouTube, Josh right now is actually committing to a Halloween costume. All uh, Aaron Rodgers, Packers quarterback, he is going to be <laughs> John Wick next season, but his name will be Josh Wick. So yeah, his hair is full of life. Looks like he's been using a uh, uh, Pert Plus. He's looking good. He's smelling good. He's you feeling know, good. It's- I wish I could say it was for that. It's more of a midlife crisis thing, though. I just want to know. I want to know what it looks like grown out. Uh, Why don't you, you know, buy, a, my... buy a sports car like a normal human being? What the hell's wrong with you? Cost too much money. This is this is free. I actually saved money by doing this. So, you know, I don't have to pay 20 bucks for a haircut. Yeah, but pretty soon your hair is going to look so nice and lush and full. And just like it's going to shine. You're going to have to start buying barrettes. You're going to have to get those little butterfly clips. I know, have to get, I'm going to be like yeah. Bavio, you know? Well, just think of all the extra money. Dude, actually, think of all the extra money you're going to make from having this long, uh, lush head of hair because you're you're going to be able to pose for the Fabio romance novels. You're going to be making all this side hustle money. You know, I have to start you know, narrating romance novels on the channel, too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> you're like... You're like, yeah, we're gonna take, we're gonna segue from horror movie or you know horror movie adaptations in novel form for the channel. We're going, we're going straight into cheesy romance novels. Uh, who is the lady Nora Roberts? Is she the, or is that an actress or is it Nora Roberts? Is she the one who writes the romance books? <laughs> Dude, it's like a dime a dozen. I don't know. That sounds familiar though. Uh, what yeah, you're gonna I, be on her cover? What ha- I remember when we were kids and you'd go into Seven Eleven and. Um, You'd go into Seven Eleven and they'd have comic books on a rack, but they would also have like uh, the dime a dozen, like you said, romance novels. You could get like five or six for like three bucks. It was like porn too, man. For for you know eleven year old us, some oh. of those covers were pretty erotic. <laughs> Absolutely, especially growing up in a house like I did. My mom would go through religious phases. The sometimes the best porn you could get is looking at the covers of those romance novels, but also I'd say the J.C. Penney's catalog was a big one for me. You go Ooh, straight to that uh, raw section. Music videos like VH1, MTV, you know, like Joel and stuff like that. You know, uh, no doubt, <laughs> some of that yeah, stuff was. Pretty cool. You're like, oh my god, Gwen, I'd love to walk through the spider webs with you, baby. Oh, uh, my yeah, she, god. Whenever I was twelve, that was my crush, man. And then she went and sold out and went bananas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm kind of embarrassed and uh, that you brought this up, but uh, here's a good times fun fact for all the good timers. Uh, We'll start off season two premiere episode with something a little crazy. Since Josh did bring up the MTV uh, porn thing, I may or may not have. uh, (laughs) 
watched uh, Nelly Hot in Here music video and uh, enjoyed it a little bit more than most people would. Uh, at the age of 18, you had to use what you had to use. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> It yeah. wasn't as easily accessible then. You had to wait for it to load on the computer for like 10 minutes. Yeah. Uh, back oh, in yeah. Days. Well, dude. XX, passwords.com. Dude, trying to you take care of your business in a three and a half music, a three and a half minute long music video is harder than you think. It's like, Nelly, just shut the hell up. Like, get back to the girl being sprayed with the, the shower head over here. Like, let's, let's get in. Let's get out. My mom might yeah, come had, in. Who knows? I had a fun fact segue into a little joke about next Halloween since you brought up Halloween. Uh, ICP just released their fifth Joker card album on their second set of Joker cards. Like They're like in their 50s now or late 40s, you know. And uh, they're still putting... And I'm a juggalo. Like, it's... it's I am a juggalo, but I'm, I'm saying like, it's time to hang it up after... You know, it's like after, they had this whole thing after six Joker cards. The end of the world was going to come it's the end of everything, and it's like, nope, just we're going to start over. Yeah, you know, psych. So. <laughs> we're reshuffling the deck. <laughs> <laughs> Me and my wife are going to go as Halloween next year as the intensive care posse. Uh, oh, my you know, God. Since, since they're getting up there in age. ICP. <laughs> uh, I just saw a thing about uh, the ICP. Uh, I saw an interview of, of Shaggy Two Dope and, you know, Violent J. That's their names, if you guys don't know who they are. They're the ones who paint their faces. They have a, Their fans are rabid. Uh, they get tattoos of icy of the band on their arms, on their back, everywhere. They get the face paint actually tatted on their face. Twenty yes. like forever. They have the the Juggalo face paint. Well, the two guys who are the you know the main guys in the ICP army, the Juggalo army, Yo, said Bruce. that yeah, they said Josh that they even think that their fans went you know go a little too far sometimes, and they just can't believe it. They think it's crazy. The FBI is like, there's like a whole documentary coming out about it. They were trying to call Juggalos a gang. And uh, the funny thing is, ICP's message is actually that of God and love. Like, they actually came out and, uh, on one of their albums uh, at the end of the first set of Joker cards, and it was called The Unveiling. Yeah. And it was like, they were singing about what all this stuff was leading up to, what it was all about. And, like, the lyrics are literally, truth is we follow God. We've always been behind them. The Carnival is God, and they all juggalos find him. And then they go on to say, we're not sorry if we tricked you. We don't care what happens now. So they, like, put it all out there, unveiling, you know, that they're trying to bring people to God and, like, spread love uh, with their, yeah, their music is violent and horror and stuff, but it reaches a certain group of people that normal people wouldn't try to approach in that manner, you know? So in a way, they kind of, it's all the cast outs and everything, and uh, Pete, you know, the loners and stuff get to be part of something bigger. And it's really fucked up the FBI and stuff trying to call them a gang just because they don't understand what it is. And there's like a whole documentary coming out about them fighting to stop that from happening. I think that's pretty cool. Well, I think the FBI should spend their time <clears throat> and resources, uh, you know, investigating, you know, actual criminals, actual, right, yeah. you know, cases instead of. Whether or not the Juggalo Nation are a gang, if they are a gang, what what are they guilty of? Like having a good time, like exactly, right? I, uh, drinking I, too much Fago. Yeah, I don't. I, I I used to work at this golf course in uh, Kaiser, which is like uh, North Salem in Oregon. So there was this kid who was a Juggalo, and he was one of the nicest kids I've ever met. He had really bad anxiety though. And one of the ways he dealt with his anxiety was by being a juggalo. It actually helped him because it gave him an outlet to put that nervous energy into. So, I, you know what? If somebody's doing something positive uh, and it's, you know, if they're helping them in a, in a great positive way like that, it can't be all bad. That's that's ridiculous that the FBI is investigating them for that. I know it, it's, it's really messed up. But while we're on the topic of, uh, you know, not really – popular music like yeah. uh pop uh and uh god and all that uh did you hear that marilyn manson is now a born again christian yeah i did um i did because you told me before the show and i'm still not able to process it because this has got to be a publicity stunt there's no way this is real well he's got marilyn... all those accusations against him you know i think yeah like 
they, they he's not Marilyn Manson anymore. He's Marilyn Magician because he's <laughs> like, hey, I know all this rape and you know torture and stuff on the right side here, but why don't you look at the left side here? Like I'm, you know, I'm with B- the Bieber and Kanye. And we're all praying here, you know, and everything's Andy, fine. Andy Christ Superstar is going to become, you know, Jesus Christ Superstar the revival or something. The reboot. Dude, when you told me. When you told me before the show that Marilyn Manson, Kanye West, and Justin Bieber were together at a church service, I thought you were starting out one of those cheesy jokes. It's like, so Justin Bieber, Kanye West, and Marilyn Manson walk into a bar. Right. Like, that's what it's – That's. I was like, okay, where's the punchline? <laughs> Where are we it's going It's almost with as outrageous as all these televangelists and stuff that have been talking about Donald Trump like he's Jesus Christ, like – He's uh he's been prophesied for this and that and God is guiding him and stuff. It's like Trump, Trump. yeah. They he, he's like re- regarded as like Jesus, man, as important as Jesus. Uh, there's the all only, kinds of clips, dude. The only no thing politics that I... involved here, no politics, people. That's just nuts. I'm sorry. The only thing that I had seen about Trump as in regards to like the people thinking he's Jesus is I had seen a, a a lot of groups think he was the Antichrist. I've seen that. No, there, there's a big group of like televangelists, uh, televangelical, televet. I can't even know how to say it. Televangelists. Uh, yeah, that uh, that believe he is chosen and ordained by God. Uh, for real, uh, God's taste is getting bad. I guess I don't know. I guess all the decent human beings uh, on Earth were busy doing something else or dead. Um, but yeah, I didn't mean to get off on that tangent. It's just crazy. Well, That's going it, on in Marilyn Manson. If he is, if he is Jesus, if Trump is Jesus, then Jesus juice is actually, it's not unfermented wine anymore. It's Diet Coke. <laughs> and Big Macs. And the body yeah, of Big, Christ. Big Macs. Yeah, if Trump was leading a church service and, you know, Marilyn Manson and Biebs and Kanye were there in attendance, uh, you know, like at mass for Catholics, uh, everybody takes a Dixie cup full of uh, Diet Coke and then instead of crackers, they're pulling apart a KFC biscuit. <laughs> this this is my body. This is this is my body. Very big body here. Very very beautiful body. The most beautiful body ever. Everybody says it. Nobody disagrees. Always winning. How is he? No, gonna you know, maybe it is. No, go ahead. Big, go ahead. I was just saying, maybe maybe it is the Big Mac is the body of him because you know they got the the secret sauce is like orange. So I mean, it makes sense. Dude, I had the worst <laughs> Big Mac ever yesterday yesterday was sunday so it was cheat day so all the good timers already kind of know when my cheat day is because i've talked about it a thousand times but yesterday was cheat day josh so uh nicole and i decided to get mcdonald's for cheat day lunch and i'm telling you i think my big mac because the lettuce was brown the bun was the bun was hard the but the top bun was hard so it tasted like it was an old big mac that they reheated like Did you eat the, the whole thing, I, or take yeah, it I paid paid for the some bitch. I'm eating it, like, but it <laughs> it was disgusting. It was all it didn't. You know, how, like when you reheat fast food and the flavor kind of just goes away, and mm-hmm. that's what it. They sold. I swear to God that the the McDonald's on River Road in Eugene, Oregon. If you're listening and you live in Oregon, don't go there. They're selling reheated Big Macs, and if I go in there and I see them doing it in person, I'm gonna slap them. I've gonna, never eaten a Big Mac in my my life never had one and you're you I'm not, never I'm not have, what? thousand island i'm not a big thousand island dressing kind of person just it's not even it's i don't think it's it's mac sauce i don't even think it's actually thousand island oh it's, okay it's thousand island-esque i've got a life hack for you though as far as reheating fast food don't um, do it um, <laughs> is that the life hack exactly. don't just don't do it the burgers there's no way to do that but the fries like fast food fries Instead of nuking them or even sticking them in the oven, just get some oil heated up and boiling, you know, and yeah. fry them for just long enough to heat them up. And it'll, it's going to be just like you just got them. You have to re-salt them, but it, it comes out just like they do from the restaurant if you reheat them in oil. So it's like a flash fry situation then. Exactly. You just do it quick enough to heat them up because they're already cooked. And that, that way they don't come out all soggy and gross and stuff they come out pretty much like they were when you bought them like well, you know i'm glad you brought up that little cooking tri- tip because actually good timers 
Uh, now that's a new that's a new segment for the Good Times podcast. Uh, Good Times with Alex and Ryan. Uh, cooking tips with Josh Larue. Now look for it every episode. Every episode from now on, Josh is actually going to give you a a cheap and inexpensive, and quite frankly, pretty darn tasty way uh, to cook on a budget. So all you good timers out there, all you housewives, all you single dads, be on the lookout. Cooking tips with Josh Larue. Every episode from now on. And then there's then the other segment. Uh, Josh Larue comes on the episode every time and says, "Fuck." you alex <laughs> look for that inflection <laughs> yeah also hey look for that look for the fuck you alex uh every episode it's gonna be there more than once it'll actually be a drinking game so every time Al- josh tells alex to fuck off during an episode take a drink <laughs> well since i've hijacked your uh show so far with all this stuff that wasn't like on the bullet points what do you got yeah. prepared for the show <laughs> well since we're 47 minutes into season two premiere and i haven't looked at one <laughs> part of the rundown yet uh here's all you know seven pages i've got prepared for us josh let's get into fun facts and and okay. and I, damn it i'm excited let's get into fun facts first fun facts of the season you ready or what you got any more you got any more stuff to i'm good to drop on me or what slash track season two all right uh, <laughs> slash tracks. did i say slash tracks earlier <laughs> We oh, said, over, but go ahead. oh, you son of a bitch. I said, <laughs> hey, before we started filming, while we were actually filming, uh, a little behind the scenes uh, look into the to the to the pre-production of Good Times tonight. Uh, Josh and I are so inundated with fan mail for Slash Tracks that I, I thought we were actually doing another episode of Slash Tracks. So when I saw I that, it. yeah, when I saw that gorgeous goatee of his and the, those long locks, I just immediately thought we were doing Slash Tracks. I apologize. I gotta right. be in character. I'm a prisoner, right? I can't shave or get my hair cut. So. Yeah, you're not allowed to talk about anything enjoyable right now. You have to be method the whole episode right now. <laughs> hey, last episode of Slash Tracks, 385 views right now. So yeah, one week in. Yeah, kind of going, kind of going low key viral for us, maybe. Low for us, yes. Yeah, we might. And there's a also since we're talking about Slash Tracks, real quick. Uh, the pros, uh, what is it? Wrestlers versus zombies. Mm-hmm. We're almost to 900 views on YouTube, and if we break a thousand views, Josh, I think for Slash Tracks we should have a giveaway. What do you think? I'll grow my hair out. All right. No, well, we'll do, we'll, do, we'll do a giveaway. We'll do. Maybe something. we'll do a giveaway. Maybe we'll do. Maybe we'll do a gift card. Maybe we'll do uh, a DVD of an actual decent horror movie. We'll, maybe we'll we'll think about it. But or anyway, you can be abducted by Master Evil and get to appear on an episode of Slash Tracks. Yeah, maybe if you uh, maybe if you are the whoever is the thousandth viewer, <laughs> whoever's the thousandth viewer, and we can verify it of. Uh, Pro Wrestlers vs. Zombies on Slash Tracks, uh, that episode specifically, we might have uh, Master Evil actually kidnap your ass, and you can appear in an episode (laughs) with us. There you go. Anyway, uh, enough about Slash Tracks and our successful other, very successful, very popular, just on the verge of absolutely, you know, (laughs) superstardom, the other show. Let's get back to the season premiere, fun facts, and we're going to do it right now. Josh, if you take a picture of your food in Germany... The chef actually legally owns the rights to that photo. Wow, that is that's a fun fact. I, I can see that. Yeah, it's he's like, if you're a, say you're like a, a, a influencer or you're one of those people on Instagram and you're making money from your whatever your clicks or likes or whatever, and you're like, well, oh, I'm at you know Luigi's having you know a grinder right now, and you know uh, you come out and Luigi's like. Listen, you son of a bitch, if you post that thing, I want half or I want all of it. I want all of it. Uh, and you're still paying for the grinder, too, right? Because he's not having it because it, social influencers, they're taking other people's work. They're taking other people's art. They're turning in their stupid little Instagram stories. And uh, I actually like this. I, li- I like that the, the chefs in Germany are, are taking a stand because it is art, Josh. And if anyone knows anything about food. Uh, and menu items and recipes and just fun facts about food in general. Josh, it's you, isn't it, pal? Oh my God, stop it. Stop it. It was, <laughs> he, 
Keep reheating fries. Come on, man. <laughs> I do make a killer banana pudding, though. I'll, I'll do that for your show. Season episode two. Hey, 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 was that a text? Was that another menu update on your phone there, Josh? <laughs> it was, uh, it was uh, your McDonald's in town. They were calling to let me know that they did give you the shitty Big Mac that I asked them to give you yesterday. Oh, yeah, it's confirmed. <laughs> it's, it's been confirmed. Yeah. I got to pay them. Well, I took I a picture that, of it. So. Hey, I see that they're not only bad at making Big Macs nowadays, they're also bad at, uh, you know, sending the information out on time because my <laughs> cheat day was yesterday, and you just got that text at 9.09 p.m. the next day. I told really them to wait at least 24 hours, you know. Yeah, okay, yeah. The, the people, at River, people at River Road McDonald's in Eugene, Oregon, just really on the ball lately. It's the really time. tearing it up, yeah. That hard part. <laughs> Yeah, they need to have, you know, at McDonald's, how they'll be like, well, we served, you know, 1 billion, 500,000, you know, burgers or whatever. Uh, they just need to start counting how many shitty burgers they've served that day because I definitely got one of them. I can confirm it. <laughs> yeah, at least one would be on that board. Mine. Do you think that if you pay for the food in Germany that it's, you, you've paid for the rights to take a picture of it? Uh, maybe, but I don't know. Is that like if you bought a Picasso painting and you own the picture? Ah, good, point. good point. Good point. You know, you didn't paint it; you own it. Um, yeah. or a Subway sandwich from Subway with the Subway sandwich the Subway artist. sandwich artist. Yeah, if you eat it, you're actually that's illegal. You're offending them. <laughs> they, they own your feces. Yeah. Oh my God! You you changed Wait. my whole. Maybe. Let's go there. What if you take a picture of that? Did they uh, number two? Too? Yeah. I don't know. because. Well, no. I, you know what? I think because <laughs> your, your body, whatever came out the back end of that original work of art is now your work of art. That is a one of a kind, like a thumbprint. So whatever turd you made out of that sandwich artist's foot long, that is now your work of art. Because I bet you it's just like a thumbprint. You, you, we've t- you and I talked about how the anus... The anus is, has an individual, like everybody's anus looks, you know, has a different yeah, it's, it's like an anus imprint. Print. Yeah, like a thumbnail or like a thumb. So, mm-hmm. no, that's a one of a kind. That would be, if you had a really nice turd, that would be a LaRue. Oh, That'd be a LaRue. Yeah. That, yeah. Would be a, that would be the road? Yeah. That, that's Absolutely. what LaRue stands for. <laughs> hey, can I tell you what my text actually was? This is pretty funny. Yeah, what is it? We have been trying to contact you regarding the PlayStation 5 you won from the raffle, exclamation mark. Get your new PlayStation here. <laughs> and they want you to click on it and accept it and, <laughs> because they think you're a moron. Exactly. Fun fact number two. Cornflakes were originally <laughs> invented to discourage masturbation. Did you know that? No. How? Yeah, they got well. They're just super bland. They have no. They have no flavor. Um, I don't know the exact thought process behind it, but I've heard the story. The guy who created cornflakes was like, uh, he, I don't know if he was a Quaker or he was. I think. I think he was a Seventh Day Adventist. I'm not. I'm not even kidding. I think he was a Seventh Day Adventist, uh, and I think he thought that if he made a bland cereal option, breakfast option that people would be less inclined that like less excitement would mean less chances of, you know, jerking off. So I think that by making cornflakes as dull as possible, he was like actually helping the world, you know, cure them of their sexual urges. Or maybe he thought people would take pictures of it and be so busy with court battles over who owns the picture of the cornflakes. They had yeah. no time for masturbating. It, well, At least well, jerk. <laughs> Wunderbar. <laughs> um, I don't know about that one, dude. I have I have nothing to say. I don't I don't get it. But okay, well, the guy, guy <laughs> the dude who created corn or the dude who created cornflakes is trying to discourage masturbation. What was the dude who created frosted flakes trying to do? <laughs> <laughs> what was he trying to encourage you know he just wants everybody to be jerking off 24 <laughs> 7 he's like the they're great <laughs> well maybe the guy that that made cornflakes just had really short arms and he was just jealous you know like a t-rex or something just, uh, that's why t-rex is so angry well, I'm just, I'm being serious man like if cornflakes discourage masturbation frosted flakes no, I, exactly it's like 
uh, you'd never get anything done with that thought process. If that's how that works, okay? The dude was reckless when he designed Frosted Flakes. He knew full well what Corn Flakes prevented. So when he went into making Frosted Flakes, he knew, he flaunted in the face of of masturbation and just decency. You know what I'm saying? He knew what he was doing. Now People, he, tricks make so much more sense. Tricks. Yeah. Tr- and silly. lucky charms. Oh, man. Uh, pots of golden rainbows and the red balloons, huh? <laughs> They're oh. logically delicious. <laughs> yeah. What, what about Cheerios, though? Cheerios uh, are shaped like circles, but they're also kind of plain. Okay. Uh, me and my me and my my daughter play this game at grocery stores where we look at all the really stupid names of generic cereals. You know, like Tutti try, Fruities. Uh, I think Cheerios is Happios. There's one called Happios. Uh, we finally found our winner. It was called Cocoa Drops. That was our winner. That just sounded like Wait, say, th- say that again? Say that again? Cocoa Drops. <laughs> <laughs> Cocoa <laughs> Drops. That's, uh, that was, it's like little chocolate balls. It, it was, <laughs> like, it, it, it won. Uh, so that, but yeah, there's like so many shitty generic names that are just hilarious, but that one. Why don't Cocoa they just, drops. why don't they just call Cocoa Drops Rabbit Poop? Right. <laughs> I don't know how I got there. I don't Man. know what that is. But yeah, I could go it, for a nice big bowl of rabbit poop. That would just, it's inexpensive and it's delicious. <laughs> so what's hey, fun fact number three? All right, fun fact number three. Since we're talking about chocolate, let's talk about it again. Most people with chocolate allergies, so if you're allergic to cocoa drops, are actually allergic to the ground up cockroach parts found in every batch of chocolate. So not the chocolate itself. The average chocolate bar contains eight insect pieces. The FDA actually allows 60 insect pieces per 100 grams of chocolate. Wow. So if, you know, Billy says he's allergic to chocolate, no, you're allergic to cockroach balls and cockroach asshole. (laughs) It's funny you say that because I did know, like, for every uh, can of vegetables, like canned vegetables, they're allowed a certain amount of insect parts. I knew that. What the hell are they doing? Chocolate, though. What the hell are they doing at the factories? They're just like, who? who, So your one job, okay? Some people's job, like, put the label on. So a thousand, ten thousand cans go by you a day. You put the label on straight, and then the next guy, like, he makes sure that it's packaged correctly and whatever. And then one guy seals the can. Couldn't they just have a guy that, like, makes sure there's no dead cockroaches in, in the stuff? I mean, what is it that hard? Cockroaches are huge. Right. <laughs> they're just, they're, they have nobody in an event of this happening. Oh, heaven forbid a cockroach gets in it. We can't hire a guy minimum wage to, like, look at the cans to make sure there's none in it. Instead, they just created some arbitrary number of insect pieces that could actually be in said can. It's just easier that way, man. Yeah, that's the way, they don't have okay. to I want to no. know what happened about 10, 12 years ago. Like the, the gluten attack where all mm-hmm. of a sudden people were allergic to it. You know, like were we attacked by gluten about 12 years ago? Because before that, I can't remember anybody ever going, is that, is that gluten free? Uh, I've got a gluten allergy. Like, what the fuck I don't, happened? dude, gluten intolerance, gluten allergies. I'm just going to say it. Okay. I'm coming out and I'm saying it. I've thought of this. I believe this. Uh, People in third world countries, people who are starving, there's no such thing as a gluten intolerance. There's no such thing as a gluten allergy. Only in America or countries that are well off would would create such a non-existent bullshit thing as a gluten intolerance. You have so much time and money on your hands. You have such an overabundance of food that you're uh, at your you know, at whatever at, that you can have at your disposal at all moments of the day that you're coming up with things th- that you have an issue with, with, with this delicious food. We're, you're creating the, problems out of thin yeah, we're, air. We're one of the only places in the world that has all you can eat buffets, man. Uh, you know, in the UK, it's like um, tipping your wait staff is like an insult. Uh, because they're paid so well and stuff. Uh, it's crazy, like, how America is with their food. Uh, 
I, I had somebody visit from the UK and they could not believe the all you can eat places that were, you know, like signs and stuff. All you can eat buffet, all you can eat. That's not a thing. That's not a thing over there. Well, I, I, well, I, you know what, in that same vein, I have noticed that in Europe and other countries, they have like a lot, they have more courses, but they're smaller courses. They're like, they'll have a cup of, a cup of soup is considered a course. And then a salad is the second course. And then like a very light protein and a vegetable and a starch. And then like for dessert, they have a very small whatever. And then tea or coffee in America. Yeah. And each item, uh, especially chocolate items, you know, will have large amounts of (laughs) dead cockroach parts scattered throughout the meal. Um, (laughs) No, but in America, it's like instead of having smaller, you know, courses or whatever, smaller meals, they just have one huge meal. It's like and then and then, you know what? In America, they're they're such gluttonous, just gorging themselves, fat, lazy bastards that they've actually created a diet around this. It's called intermittent fasting now. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) Yeah, I ate a whole turkey. I ate a whole turkey and stuffing and a gravy. I, I didn't even use a ladle. I just shoved the whole gravy boat into my mouth and drank it and almost ate the boat as well. But I hadn't eaten for like 23 hours. So I was in a really great intermittent fast. It's also like partially keto. So I'm going to lose weight for sure. For sure. Thank this God day. I was treated and cured of my gluten allergy <laughs> uh, before. <laughs> <laughs> We're so fat as a country that you can go- absolutely gorge yourself till you want to vomit. And it's still considered a diet. <laughs> intermittent fasting, ladies Christ. and gentlemen. That yeah. Intermittent fasting sounds just as bullshit as gluten allergy. So, yeah. Dude, I'm going to tell you right now, good timers. I've lost 152 pounds, and I lost it by exercising and a calorie deficit. I, I ate less <laughs> than what I actually – or I burned more than I ate, Okay. It's math. It's a math problem. If any of you guys are having a weight issue and you want some help, uh, I will actually speak to you. I'll help you. I'll coach you up. No problem. Don't buy into this phony baloney stuff. It's a calorie deficit and exercise. End of story. That's that's right, Josh. That's the way it is, bud. That's I, it. I watched your journey, man. It's been amazing. Nobody it, wants to. Nobody wants to buy into the fact that. You have to work out. You have to eat less. It is what it is, okay? Everybody wants the shortcut. Everybody wants the the quick fix. And maybe you will get a quick fix with some of this stuff, but ultimately it, you'll, gain, you'll gain the weight back because it's not a lifestyle. It's a, it's a Band-Aid on a bullet hole. So people I'm going to get off I my soapbox. Season one, man. Mm-hmm. What, wait, what? What's yeah, that? people thought I recast you. Oh, get the hell out of here, for no, I'm real? Just fucking, I'm fucking with you. I'm fucking they're like, with they're like, why is Alex wearing the fat suit from Nutty Professor on the first season of Slash Tracks? No, you've done really good, man. Seriously, to the point that I can okay. see somebody thinking that. That's really awesome. I, hey, I got the best compliment of my life the other day. Uh, somebody, I showed somebody a before and after at the restaurant that I work at, and he asked me the first question. He asked me was like, uh, "So you did it." you did it naturally, right? You didn't have surgery. Did you? He asked me if I had surgery. That's, that's how much, that's how dramatic the before and after is. Yeah. That was a good compliment. At some point though, slow down. So you don't turn into like the skeleton from uh, once bitten, you know, that uh, turns to dust at the end. What do you, where do you get? I might listen, don't worry about what I do. Okay. You just worry about your recipe segments and I'll take care of the rest. All right. It's my brother. I don't want you to No, You're doing great. Man, seriously. You're well, doing... it's my, Hey, it's my goal, Josh. And I'm going to announce it. I'm, I'm announcing a lot of things on the season premiere season, season two, season premiere. I'm announcing this too. It's my goal. I want to get thin enough to where if they do a return of the living dead sequel, I want to play the tar man in the next okay. one. Okay. Yeah. I want to be able to pull the suit off. I don't want to have Tar Man's not supposed to have a gut, okay? And, <laughs> You're I like a wanna, size two. I want a way two. Yeah, I want to weigh, okay, the proper 127 pounds, you know, uh, that Tar Man. Tar- yeah, it, Return of the Living Dead. All you good timers, if you guys are also slashaholics, check out Tar Man YouTube. Uh, it's a very, very probably the best zombie ever in cinema, in my opinion. From the, the original. Scared the shit out of me as a kid. Scared the shit out of me. 
Oh, dude, when he and he also had intelligent thought in that film. Uh, he the girl, you know, falls through the stairs or whatever, and she locks herself in the locker. The tar man, a zombie that was in a uh, like a burning barrel sealed up for like 20 years from the U.S. military. He's he, he finally gets freed from trioxin or whatever. He gets reanimated. He's able to th- have a uh, human thought and actually think things through. He he rigs up a, a pulley system with a chain to the locker and tries to pull the door off. <laughs> so he he's actually capable of human thought too. That's it was MacGyver. It was MacGyver before. Yeah, uh, Richard before Dean Anderson's zombie. Yeah. <laughs> well, man, it's I a- hate to say it, but I'm like four hours into an I- I- intermittent fast. Yeah, so if we can yeah. move this along. I'm getting pretty hungry. <laughs> you know what? It, you, four hours. Always... Four so. hour. <laughs> so you mean yes. breakfast to lunch? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Listen, it's been about two and a half hours. And I'm a little peaked right now. I'm starving right. my ass off. Can we move this stupid show along? <laughs> All right. Last fun fact of the night here. In 2008, Joshua. A 13-year-old boy from Florida was actually arrested for excessive farting in class. Was it real farts or like the underarm thing? No, he was farting his ass off because he was in the middle middle of an intermittent fast. Okay. And it, his tummy couldn't handle it. Well, actually, no, it wasn't an intermittent fast. He had a very serious gluten intolerance. All the cocoa drops. He had too many cocoa uh, drops. Yeah, he had too many cockroach parts, and as we all know, there's gluten in cockroach parts. Well, if his parents had just given him cornflakes, he would have been so, you know, beside himself from not being able to masturbate. He wouldn't be eating, <laughs> you know, and he wouldn't be farting. Did he really get arrested? He got arrested. Um, I'm not sure if the charges stuck. Um, but one thing's for sure, if he's farting that much to the point to where he got arrested, his ass cheeks stuck to the seat of that chair, probably, because he probably crapped his pants. I wonder what uh, the townsfolk thought. I bet there was a lot of gaslighting over that. Oh, for sure. It, Josh, <laughs> if, if, dude, Josh, if this kid really did get arrested, the police showed up to homeroom or whatever in junior high because he, they're going to arrest him because he won't stop farting, this kid might as well kill himself. He might as well go to another school because he's never going to live that down. He's never getting a date. No one's going to ever want to be friends with him. It, say he, he becomes handsome later on and he's just a stud. All the girls of all the friends of the girl who's dating him is going to be like, isn't that Johnny, the kid who shit his pants in homeroom? And the, the, the cops actually I, were called because he wouldn't stop farting. That's the kid who wouldn't stop farting. So he was arrested. That kid is screwed for life, dude. Yeah, man, that's fucked up. What, what about when he got to jail? You know, what are you in for? <laughs> I guess he wouldn't have to. I ate too much Taco Bell before sixth period. I crapped my pants and they, the police arrested me. He'd be the only person that other people would be actively trying to help him catch the soap before it hits the ground, you know? Dude, so. if they if they, if the police actually arrested people regularly for farting too much, I would have the longest rap sheet of all time. <laughs> Especially first thing in the morning, so... <laughs> You know, they'd just be they'd be waiting at your door. Yeah, like when you have to do the morning the morning uh, you know shit shower shave combo, and you're in the middle there, and uh, yeah, cops would just show up. They're like, "Hey, uh, don't even try to deny it. We can smell it. You're under arrest. Obviously, put your hands out. You know, put your pants on. Come out here to the squad car. You're under arrest." What What would the uh, charge be? What What would the name? Because there's always like, you know. Uh, these names for things like disorderly conduct and shit, you know? So. Oh, uh, illegal flatulence in a school zone. <laughs> uh, breaking wind in front of thy neighbor. Uh, in a school zone. Thou shalt not oh, break absolutely. Wind <laughs> thou shalt not break wind in front of thy brethren and sisters and brothers. Okay. Yeah. It's a sin to fart. Absolutely. We're, we're all going to hell. <laughs> Uh, Josh, you've made it to the pearly gates. Uh, you, you lived a fair and decent life. Answer me these questions. This one question. Have you ever farted in front of anybody? Wait, wait. In my defense, I did. But right after Justin Bieber and Kanye West prayed and over me. They prayed <laughs> yeah. over me. <laughs> God, I cannot believe that Marilyn Manson is claiming to be a converted Christian. This guy, literally his entire career is the definition, the poster boy for blasphemy. 
<laughs> like, right. Yeah, like whatever whatever you can say or do against Jesus Christ, uh, you know, he definitely has done it. And this is just real. I find it interesting that the video and the pictures of him praying with Biebs and Kanye, if you go and, you know, find the picture online, he's full, full Marilyn Manson pale makeup on still under the robe. <laughs> I will say this. I will say this. There, there is a connection between Marilyn Manson and God. God removed a rib from Adam. Yeah. To create Eve. Yes. Marilyn Manson removed ribs from himself. To suck his dick. So, <laughs> tomato, tomato, right? Yeah. Um, I thought you were going to say to create s- ticket sales. But oh. you... <laughs> I smell it. <laughs> like, hey, you can't listen to Marilyn Manson. Why's that? Well, that, he's, he's, he's gay because he removed his own ribs to suck his own dick, man. Like, you're gay, too, if you listen to that. Because, you know, he did that, you know. And it's like, oh, really? Where did you hear that? The Star or the National Enquirer? Right. <laughs> and also, and also, are you gay because you masturbate? No. Right. And if you and if you had a chance to actually fellace yourself, would you do it? Maybe no. not. But I mean, if you had the possibility to do it, you you might toss the ball around a couple times to yourself. They would say it. They would say it like Norm Macdonald in Dirty Work. No. <laughs> no. Yeah, you're telling me that six or seven, uh, Amsdell lights in, you know, and you have the ability to do it. That you know, you have no ribs. You're born without ribs or whatever. You're telling you're telling me born eight or nine. Ribs. Yeah, eight or nine white claws in. You're not gonna maybe have the thought. I don't know. Your heart's just like beating right here. Like yeah. Small, yeah. Missing, so. Like, uh, are we talking no ribs at all, or just missing some? I had, the rumor was that he had removed his lower, like, two ribs on the bottom so he could, like, I guess, yogi himself, like, uh, y- y- you know, bend, like Dalzim from Street Fighter 2, bend his way down there. What? Also, if you're going to do that, say Marilyn Manson did. Up, it's a kiss up. Yeah, yeah. exactly. If he blew himself, Josh, is he, is he swallowing or is he spitting? What's he doing there? Okay, let's, what, what's that your fun facts on the show? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, I guess that's the line. I just crossed it. Uh, Josh can talk about anything he wants, uh, but if I say something, all of a sudden it's too much for old Josh, huh? <laughs> the beautiful well, penis. The yeah, beautiful penis. Yeah, that's the line, right? There. That's the line, and I crossed it as usual. <laughs> all right, we're going into good time sports. Your favorite, your favorite part of the show, Josh. Oh God! All right, Ready? Let me know when you're done. That's good. All right. What, what do we got? We're gonna keep these short and sweet. All right. Buffalo Bills quarterback Josh Allen was intercepted, sacked, and also fumbled a football, and the the football was recovered by Josh Allen. This was on Sunday, yesterday. He fumbled the ball and picked it up? Josh Allen was intercepted, sacked, and fumbled a football, and the ball was recovered all by Josh Allen. What? Had this happen? Well, lucky you asked, Josh. The the Bills oh, okay. quarter, the Bills quarterback Josh Allen had all these bad things happen in the football game to him by Jacksonville Jaguars defensive player Josh Allen. Oh my god. This is the first time it's ever happened. There's never been in the history of the NFL, 100 years or whatever. No ju- the same person's name has not done any of those things to another person with the same name. Isn't that the 7th sill or something? Oh, and first it's Marilyn Manson converts to Christianity with Justin Bieber and Marilyn Manson. Uh, and then intermittent fasting becomes a thing along with gluten intolerance. And then Josh Allen is sacked by Josh Allen. That's the seal has been broken. We are officially in the end times, buddy. Don't fart. Somebody's, You'll go oh, to hell. Somebody has opened the seal of yeah. cornflakes. Yeah. Don't don't masturbate. Don't fart. Don't remove the ribs from your lower part of your, you know, don't do any of that. Don't do it. Go to hell. Seven seals broke. All right. Second sports story for good times. We're going to move in and out real quick. So second sports story for all you good timers and, and, and Joshua out there. All right. Have you seen Happy Gilmore? Have you seen the movie Happy Gilmore? Yes. Okay. Then you're going to like this story. An alligator walked off with a golfer's ball at a Mississippi golf course last weekend. 
Keith Williams was in a tournament at Windermere Golf Course in Gulfport, Mississippi, when his ball ended up near a pond on the 12th hole. Uh, alligator popped out of the water hazard, grabbed the ball, put it in its mouth, went right back into the water hazard. <laughs> so this guy who's in a golf tournament shot, you know, shot a shot or hit a shot. Ball lands, he's going to go over there and pick it up or hit it or whatever the hell they do. And uh, instead of being able to play his next shot, Alligator actually grabbed the ball, went back in the water, just like on Happy Gilmore. <laughs> I mean, j- identical. Seven sill, man, I'm telling you. Give he's, me he's, the ball he's, back, he's, Alligator. Oh. Did, did the guy go and start like having a fist fight with him? <laughs> <laughs> and then the alligator put him in the death roll. No. Um, no, he's all, hey, you've got one eye. You're the alligator that, you're the alligator that killed Chubbs or took Chubbs' hand. Give me the ball back, alligator. And I bet the, announce- the commentators didn't get excited. And he hit the ball. It went into the pond. An alligator just took the ball and went under the water with it. Like, I bet, I bet they didn't even get excited or anything, did they? Like, Oh, no. All golf announcers are on lithium. By exactly. order of the law. Yeah, they're all, like, on downers before. They, they... They're, they're, they're like, I really could use a sandwich. I'm on my intermittent fast. You know? I'm starving my ass off right now. I'm not allowed to speak louder than two decibels. <laughs> um, <laughs> energy. Dude, so in Happy Gilmore, when Adam Sandler fights that alligator, he he can beat an alligator's ass for the golf ball, but he can't beat Bob Barker in a fight, (laughs) but he can beat an alligator up. (laughs) Okay. Uh, Have we lost Bob Barker? Did he pass away? No, I think Bob Barker is alive, and I think I, I think you should get on the Google machine really quick. I think he's still alive. Mr. Feeney is too, man. He's still he's doing cameos. I saw Mr. Feeney in Girl Meets World, okay, and he looked rough. Yeah, he looked he looked like death. <laughs> was was visiting him. He looked like he was on the tail end of a fifteen hour intermittent fast. He looked awful. <laughs> Bob Barker is still with us. He is 97 okay. years old. Okay. He turns 98 in a month, December 12th. Okay. And, and boy, you know, good timers out there, since we're talking about Bob Barker, don't forget to have your pets spay or neutered, okay? We're going to help uh, prevent and control the pet population here on and the podcast. Be sure to have your Satanist saved. Yeah. If you, and if there's a pop musician whose career is waning and he's facing some big-time sexual assault cases, Make sure that he finds Jesus, okay? Kevin Spacey's like, damn it, why didn't I think of that? Yeah, Kevin Dude, Kevin Spacey, in actuality, we thought he was playing a dick in Horrible Bosses. Like, he's just like, what What an animal, you know, what a jerk. He's actually that guy in Horrible Bosses. He's just a terrible person. See, I have this way of separating, like, uh, movies from the people in the movies and shit, because... It's uh, it's it's art in a way, and it's it's in time, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, the, the House of Cards, I thought was a really good show. Uh, it just sucks that he's such a piece of shit. House of Cards. Was, House of Cards was a good show. It was really popular, and him turning out that he was uh, sexually assaulting men on the sets of his TV shows and all this other stuff, it ruined the show. Because I, I'm not going to support anybody who's a, pre- a sexual predator. Yeah. Uh, that just ruins it for me. And also, I'm I'm more pissed off by him doing these nefarious things. He ruined the House of Cards slot machine for me. That was one of my favorite slot machines at the casino. <laughs> I can't even play it now because the son of a bitch can't keep his hands off, you know, the Cabana Boy at the on the set. This guy's he ruined uh, Spirit Mountain Casino for me. Thanks a lot, Kevin Spacey. You freaking yeah. dick. I was really yeah. into that show, and then like the final season. <clears throat> I don't care to spoil it. I mean, it's fuck it. Uh, his character's just dead, just dead. They no, did, I, no real explanation. I, <laughs> I never finished the show. They just kill him off. Yeah, just a season. Uh, the last season starts with her as president because she was VP. You know, his wife. Yeah, and she's president, uh, and he's dead. <laughs> they don't even she's explain how he died. Eventually, it's like a, like a two second explanation. Doug Stamper killed him to save him from himself because he was going to go kill Claire. It was I, just this bad. It's like I 
that's like on Hey Dude, the Nickelodeon show, where it's like, hey, where's Ted? Oh, Ted uh, had to go to summer school. You know, he's the star of this show. Uh, here's Lance. Like, he's gone. Yeah, here's Lance, here's a new character. Enjoy that. You know, Danny, all of a sudden, Danny, the Native American, is the star. Him and Buddy are trying to carry Hey Dude now. And even as a nine-year-old, I'm like, this sucks. This sniffs of terrible writing. Like, I think in actuality, the guy who played Ted, like, went on to play the love interest of Blossom. Like, he's like, oh, network television? I'm heading that way. Like, He came yeah. back for, like, one episode where he ran away from his summer school or whatever. Yeah, I remember. And I was excited. Goodbye, Ted. Goodbye, happiness. Like, so they're playing the song. Dude, good song. Dude. Hey, all, speaking of those Nickelodeon shows, man, I, I have all these memories of, like, Welcome Back Freshman, Hey Dude, Salute Your Shorts. And I love those shows. I still there's still a very special place in my heart for them. But I recently got um, I don't know if it was on Peacock or Amazon Prime, but Salute Your Shorts is actually on one of those one of those, and I was able to rewatch the episodes. I have this like Camp Onawana basically is a whole different multiverse in my head. Like I feel like it was I feel like it was on for twenty seasons. But when I went went and rewatched all the episodes, there's like thirteen episodes in two seasons of of Salute Your Shorts. There's like nothing. Pete and Pete's got four seasons. That was a unique show. That was pretty cool. Oh, Pete and Pete might have the greatest theme song ever uh, by Polaris. Uh, yeah, good timers. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go back and go on the Google machine. Go to YouTube and look up Pol- the band Polaris, The Adventures of Pete and Pete theme song. That song is excellent. And Pete and Pete, I just rewatched the uh, Hollywood, uh, Halloween episode on Halloween. Oh, really? Do you remember? Do you remember that one, Halloweenies? Big, big. Yeah, Pete, I think I do. Yeah. Big, big Pete loses uh, the spirit of Halloween, and little Pete is pissed, obviously, and he's going to try to set the trick or treating record for the town. Oh yes. And, yeah. yeah. yeah and, the, and the whole time, they're being uh, like stalked and chased by the Halloweenies, who like just absolutely hate Halloween, and they they want to destroy Halloween. So it's a thirty minutes of your life. It's a great episode. Probably one of the best Nickelodeon sitcom episodes ever. It's great. So Salute Your Shorts had 27 episodes. Exactly. Pilot, and then 13 episodes for each season. Two yeah. seasons. It, it did yeah. seem like it went on longer than that, man. That was a good one. Uh, I've got a Mandela effect thing, I swear. Welcome, freshman. I swear I remember uh, Walter. Uh, the guy The guy that, huh? Walter. That's the guy I think of for some reason. Go ahead. Lawnmower Man 2. Uh, that guy oh, that's the not- principal, Mr. Lippy. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? I swear that it was the guy from uh, Lawnmower Man 2 played the principal, but it's not. No, it's not. The, I know who you're talking about. He's also the the guy you're thinking about from Lawnmower Man 2 is the yeah, gad. Movies. Dude, he's Max Hedrum. He's, he's Max Hedrum. Do you remember that? The guy, like the 80s. He'd tell you to drink Diet Pepsi. He looked all cartoonish. Matt Fruer. What's his name? Matt, Matt Fruer. Yeah, he was the dad. He was the dad of the neighbors in Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Yeah, let's put some swear, hustle behind that muscle, Russell. I swear, I thought he was the principal on Welcome Freshman. All my memories, it's him as the principal. <laughs> I go to watch Welcome Freshman again, and I'm like, "Where the hell's Matt Fruer? What, what? Who's this guy? He's not the principal." <laughs> Mr. Lippy, uh, is wasn't that his name, Mr. Lippy? I think so. He looks like he kind of, re, you know, it's it's. I can see the resemblance. Kind of. He's the dude. Nickelodeon is not going to be able to afford the guy who played Max Hedrum. They got the dollar store version, the generic. They got the Dino Bites version, the Coco Drops version of Max Hedrum. Actually, I'm looking at Mr. Lippy. I don't even. I don't know. It doesn't. Kind Have you ever done? Did he ever do anything else in his entire career besides Welcome Freshman? I don't think so. I don't. Think I mean, so. Matt so, Brewer, man, he's like he's like Nicolas Cage, though. He like every Stephen King te- made for TV movie, he's in it. You know, so I don't know if, if he would have been asking for too much money at, at that point, but I, I don't know. The guy from the guy who played Mr. Lippy, they're like, so. What do you want for your salary? He's like, well, I'll, you know, I'll take anything. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'll tell you the truth. I've been on an intermittent fast. I'm starving. <laughs> Whatever you guys have at craft services, I'll take it. I mean, seriously, I've never been paid for a project in my life. 
Uh, so anything's fine. Anything's fine. He thought he was actually applying to be a principal. You know, he didn't. Even yeah, he, he thought. Yeah, he just wanted. He just wanted benefits. He wanted to be able to go to the doctor. And they remade uh, uh, the Wonder Years. I saw that. I, you know, I actually saw that on your Hulu <laughs> that I use every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot I gave you the password. Yeah, I saw. I was, you know, on on your Hulu, Josh. What I watched last night was uh, the t- the movie Small Soldiers with Sean Astin and Will Wheaton. Will that movie's Wheaton. freaking good. Wheaton. Will Wheaton. Wheaton. Yeah, <laughs> Wheaton. Will Wheaton, who played Gordy Lachance in Stand By Me. So I was, I just want to say thank you again, you know, for that Hulu. Your Hulu is the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> now my Hulu's going to get shut down because Hulu's watching, you know. I always feel like Hulu's watching me. They're like, how's it feel? <laughs> hey, uh, let's get so- in. <laughs> hey, let's get into uh, headlines real quick. Let's do two of them, and then let's end the show. We're running a little long tonight. Let's uh, let's do two headlines. I had like seven written down. Let's let's oh, cherry do pick your two. Headlines. Do your headlines. We'll, we'll do. We'll, let's do two of them, and then let's do like a lightning round on the on the remaining ones. <laughs> well, no, I would. <laughs> <clears throat> let's do two headlines, and then let's do uh, Nickelodeon shows. Let's rank our top five Nickelodeon shows. Okay. And we'll see if we can agree on them, and we'll see if we can get some chatter in the chat okay. uh, for YouTube. So, first headline of the night, and you know, this is the very first story I wrote for this episode. Uh, it was the very funniest thing I saw. It was the best thing I saw. This is what I was going to lead the entire show off with, but headlines doesn't start the show, so I can't lead it off. So, you know, tough nookies. Texas man was so drunk, cops had to actually hold his head up for the mugshot. And uh, Sean Carl Payne of Humble, Texas, was accused of public intoxication out at Shamrock Bar over the weekend. The bar was reportedly offering $3 shots that evening. Uh, so the police were called, uh, initially thought he was farting too much, but it turned out he was actually... Say yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, I, still, I, saw, I saw the twinkle in your eye. I was like, I'm going to beat this son of a bitch. That looks like... <laughs> No, so the cops are called to the Shamrock Bar. Carl, Sean Carl Payne's getting out of sorts. He's he's tanked. Uh, they arrest him. They bring him down to the to the you know whatever. They bring him down to the what is it called? <laughs> they bring him down to the police station. Booking. Yeah, they they they're gonna book him. They they get his fingerprints. Now they need a mug shot. Well, guess what, Josh? This guy can't lift his head up to take the mug shot. So the police actually had to hold, there's two guys holding this guy's head up. And there, I commented on Twitter. I'm not sure if you saw this. It, he, his eyes look like when the undertaker WWE legend, the undertaker, uh, everybody thinks he's done. He's just taking a finishing maneuver from his opponent. No, he raises off the mat from the dead and he opens his eyes and rolls them back. This guy looked like the undertaker. Assault Josh is incoming. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Josh, can you... Can you call assault? We don't know if Sean Carl Payne actually landed the tombstone pile driver on the uh, arresting officers. Dude, Josh, go to Google and look up. Look up this guy. Sean Carl Payne mugshot. Okay, get my reaction live here. Yeah, too uh, drunk. Sean, wait, is it, is it S-H-A-W-N or S-C-A-N? S-E-A-N. Sean Carl Payne... Can't hold his head up mugshot or drunk mugshot. It should okay. pop right up. Go into <laughs> images on Google. <laughs> <laughs> They're holding his head up. The screen for YouTube. <laughs> Dude, he looks awful. Yeah, he looks dead. <laughs> there it is. Uh, but that's the first thing I saw for this episode. I was like, this is like way too good. So good timers go to, go to, go to YouTube or go to Google and type in Sean Carl Payne of humble Texas. It'll pop right up. Uh, I, two cops are I, holding his head up for the it, mugshot. It's show. hilarious. If you're on YouTube, maybe I had it on the screen there. Uh, <laughs> you, you gotta, I, I need two seconds though for, uh, cause I'm wearing, if you're watching, I'm wearing Ghostbusters gear here. I got Ghostbusters in the background, afterlife posters. Take a minute of your time and go, uh, go to YouTube and search for Ghostbusters Afterlife Final Trailer. It's worth it. Uh, you get the whole uh, 
voiceover from uh, Ray Stance from the first Ghostbusters talking about how the, uh, the where he's reciting passages from the Bible, you know, about the end of the world, earthquakes and all that. The trailer ends with Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, Ernie Hudson suited up back in the saddle again. And you get a really snarky comment from Peter Venkman, Bill Murray to Gozer in the new movie, not recycled dialogue. It's something new from the movie coming out. So I wanted to get that in. Uh, be sure to check that out. What's the next headline, brother? Well, first of all, the fact that they're going to be in the actual original suits from the Ghostbusters movies has got me pumped up, and I want to see that movie really bad. I'm going to send you a link to that trailer uh, after we're done. you got to check that out. It's, it's, it looks awesome. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, seriously, though, I'm not, I'm not as big of a Ghostbusters fan as Josh is, but I love Ghostbusters. And one of my biggest regrets in my life, yeah, Josh got a Ghostbusters tattoo on his arm right there. If you're watching on YouTube, you just saw it. Um, I When I was a kid, I, I went over to this other kid's house. I was like four or five. I had just gotten Winston and Peter from the, the Payless in Coos Bay, Oregon. And this kid traded me the G.I. Joe lifeline. So he traded me one G.I. Joe for two brand new Ghostbusters. And I made the trade. Oh. That was like a, yeah, I don't, I don't know why I did that. I, I, I was four. I thought it was a good idea at the time. I'm 38 years old now. I'm still regretting that trade. You were lightheaded from your intermittent fasting and gluten yeah. allergy. Oh, yeah, because at four years old, you know, I definitely had to lo- shed a few pounds. Also, What's his name? what was his name? The kid. <laughs> I don't remember what the kid was. Well, this, this, is, this, is, this is for the kid right there. Yeah, exactly. Whoever you are, random kid in Coos Bay, fuck you. You know what you're doing. <laughs> you're not a good timer. If you're in the Slashaholics or, or, or you know, if, you, if you're a good timer or you're in the Slashaholics, you're out. You're out. You're out for what you did to me when you're four. Exactly. Get out of here. He's You're probably that right. guy who bitched about us talking through Jacko. Yeah, also good timers. Josh and I have, you know, the hugely successful uh, <laughs> YouTube show, Slash Tracks. Just gigantic, uh, trending worldwide right now. Slash Tracks, episode number 22, Halloween Resurrection. If you haven't seen it, check it out on YouTube. Uh, go to the 80 Slasher Librarians YouTube channel. Uh, check it out there. Slash Tracks, type in uh, uh, Halloween Resurrection. You won't be... You won't be uh, upset that you did but anyway this son of a bitch this same kid i traded with 34 years ago swindled me then gets in the comments josh the of the of the jacko the last halloween episode special this son of a bitch hasn't hurt me enough in my life he gets in the he gets in the comments good timers and he has the audacity to tell josh and i to shut up during a riff a riff commentary Riff means we're making fun of said movie during the film, okay? That's <laughs> the whole point of it. It's in the description of the YouTube video. He said we wouldn't shut up, and he was trying to actually watch Jacko. <laughs> okay, so Josh, what should that guy do? What should he go do? Get a better taste in movies that he's yeah. still to actually watch. Yeah, he needs to get your Hulu account uh, login information. If he's if he's this hard up for movies, like free movies, uh, he needs to go to a different outlet. First of all, he just needs to befriend you and get your Hulu account. This, kid, this kid's going about it all the way the wrong way. Too bad for all the people listening and not watching the YouTube version because we just put my account information on there. <laughs> yeah. Free access to Hulu. <laughs> just flashed across the screen. Don't uh, don't use Josh's kids' accounts. Use Joshua's account. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, headline Next. number two. Final headline of the night, Josh. Number seven. All right. Yeah, we just flash forward to headline number seven from number one. All right. Recently, a sealed copy of Super Mario Brothers Two just sold at auction for eighty-eight thousand dollars. Wait, eighty-eight thousand five hundred fifty dollars. Um, it was discovered in the back of a walk-in closet from a deceased woman's estate sale. So basically these people, when this lady passed away, uh, she had no relatives or anything. So they were going to have an estate sale. And these people were contracted or whatever to go through her house and find things that were worthy to auction off at an estate sale. So lo and behold, they go in the back of this walk-in closet of this you know elderly woman who had no family or whatever. And they find a Nintendo Entertainment System with a bunch of games. You know, It's in pretty good shape. 
Well, they actually found a mint in box sealed cellophane wrapped copy of Super Mario Brothers 2. And it sold for $88,550. Wow. Are we talking USA Mario Brothers 2 with the radishes and everything? Yes, or the one that we had. The Super Mario Brothers 2 with the radishes, the one that has wart at the end. It's all a yeah. dream. Yeah. Hell uh, yeah, man. I was talking, so Josh and I were talking, actually, I think in a, I don't know if it was a previous episode of Slash Tracks or if it was a previous episode of Good Times, but we were talking about how VHS tapes are making a huge comeback because, uh, I don't want to say hipsters, but people who weren't around when VHS was around, or maybe even people like Josh's, Josh and I's age, like, you know, mid to late thirties or even early forties. They uh, certain movies uh, just don't look as good. Like horror movies in particular don't look as good on film nowadays. It's too clean. So people actually want to have copies of the horror movies on the correct film and format that they were filmed for. And yeah. VHS was just, that was the standard format back in the eighties and early nineties, even, even the early two thousands. I mean, I didn't have a DVD player until like 2002 and that was on a PlayStation two. So VHS yeah. has made it made a huge comeback. Um, cart consoles have made a huge comeback. All this stuff is back. Everybody has member berries. Member Mario Brothers? Member VC? Yeah, mem- I remember. Member Ghostbusters? <laughs> Everybody's got member berries right now. So if you or anyone you know has sealed copies of like VHS tapes, that were the first run. I'm not talking like the $5 bin Walmart, you know, diehard fifth release. I'm talking about like, if you guys know anyone that happened to have a copy of like nightmare on Elm street from 1984 or return of the living dead from 1985 or Hellraiser from 87 or whatever, if somebody has these and they're in really good shape and they maybe even watched once or twice, or if, or for the love of God, if anybody has one that's sealed, you guys need send to go. To us. Yeah, send it to the good timers. Not send, anything. send it to Josh LaRue, care of good times slash hog. Um, send it to send us. Her. We'll sell it and we'll keep your money. No, <laughs> what you guys need. <laughs> seriously, though, I'm t- Josh. These people need to go get it checked out at the auction site. Yeah, they could be setting on gold. And, and it's a, you know what? This is only scratching the tip of the iceberg. And here's another thing before I end the, the headlines. Good. Um, yeah, yes. Also, if you guys happen to, uh, come across like laser discs that aren't open or anything like that, those are also, you know, totally fair game for this. And also I, the, the point I was going to say before laser discs, um, this is just new. These, these auctions are for the VHS and the Nintendo stuff. This is all new. So the prices are only going to go up there. There isn't a market the, the prices are being set every day. There's no, there's nothing to base it off of. So every day, the prices are going up. Things are changing. So this could be a situation where you could make some serious money if you've got stuff you're setting on. So just saying, not trying to be funny, just a little informative moment. This is my menu moment, okay? This is my this is my uh, flash fry, you know, your fries segment like Josh had earlier in the show. I'm I'm being a father right now. I'm telling all the good good timers, look through your old shit. Try to make some money. Don't screw yourself over. Don't go to Goodwill for the love of God. Don't be the guy, Josh, that... Well, I took my kids' toys to Goodwill because I want to be a good person, and I, I brought a, a sealed He-Man from 1981 eight card back, and then I found out it was worth like seven thousand dollars. But I'm a big dummy, <laughs> and <laughs> and I wanted it back, but I already donated it because it's a legally binding deal. Don't be that guy. I traded you two Ghostbusters for a GI Joe. Yeah, don't be four year old intermittent fasting Alex either. Don't be a dumb ass. And also, my mother should have said no. She was there. She should have been yeah. like, no. She I just was paid the broker. Ten. Yeah. <laughs> she should have been like, I paid $10 for those two things. I don't want you to have, you know, Lifeline, who doesn't even have a gun. He's a pacifist in the G.I. Joe series, carrying around a freaking first aid kit. And he had a broken crotch, too, with a loose waist. This kid just fucked me on this trade. I don't want to talk. The... Yeah. The rubber, the O-ring was loose and his crotch was broke. If anybody collects G.I. Joe's, they know exactly what I'm talking about. Well, I know one G.I. Joe that never ate cornflakes. Who? The one with the broken crotch. Yeah, he's, he's yeah. No, no <laughs> erection possible for old Lifeline. 
so, didn't believe uh, it. Hey, he I didn't just bad. not. Huh? I feel bad. You had seven headlines, and because I talked too much, you had yeah. to cut them down to two. Well, I talk. Well, we'll save them for the next episode. But hey, we promised the good timers we're going to end the show. Top five Nickelodeon shows. They can be they can be Nicktoons. They can be the actual TV show. Josh, what's your number five show? Number five show would probably be Rocco's Modern Life. I love Rocco's Modern Life. That is absolutely underrated. Turn the page. Wash your hands. Turn the, page, turn the page. Every night at midnight, Rocco comes down the stairs for a glass of milk, <laughs> completely naked. They did a they did a they did a follow up to the show on Netflix a couple years ago. Yeah, with, with the, the actual with voices. Yeah, huh? with, the actual, with the actual voices and everything. Yeah, it's good. Uh, number four, I'd probably say. Uh, Pete and Pete, like mm. I said. Number three, Salute Your Shorts. All 27 episodes of it. Right. Uh, number two. God, that's a hard one. Um, R- Roundhouse. No. <laughs> probably uh, Doug or all that. Probably all that. And then number one, I, because I'm a horror fan, it has to be. The, uh, are you afraid of the dark? Are you afraid of the dark was pretty good, and they and when I was younger, they actually had a few episodes that scared me. Yeah, the clown <clears throat> terrified me. That's uh, the, that's that's exactly what I was thinking of in my head. That's the vision I saw in my head. Larissa uh, explains it all was fun, but that's I, I was just, sisters, and they made me watch it. I was just gonna say I'm gonna start out. My number five is Clarissa explains it all. I just I love that <laughs> show. I love the dynamic of the boy girl best friend thing where Sam would have the ladder up to her bedroom and the yeah. parents were cool with it. I, I just thought that was great. Um, number four, I would say you can't do that on television. Uh, oh, man, I shouldn't. Why did I leave that one out? Good yeah. Good. I just absolutely loved it. Was like, uh, it was like SNL or In Living Color for kids. I uh, put that and they, in front of all that. Yeah. They, well, they were doing things that were ahead of its time yeah, then. It. Well, you can't even do that stuff now. There's no way you could tie a kid up in a dungeon and bring him to a firing <laughs> a firing squad. That would yeah. never fly today. No way. That's why I love it. They were just doing stuff cutting edge in like 1982. That they're... Uh, little known fact, Alanis Morissette, a uh, pop superstar, got her start on that show. So if you go back and watch it on... Uh, I think it's on Peacock or, or Amazon Prime. It's on one of those, but... Uh, Alanis is actually on some of those earlier seasons of that show. Her, uh, Dave Coulier. Can't, uh, on the set of You Can't Do That on Television? Yeah, uh, he was, uh, he had something to do behind the scenes or something on it. Okay, think, so. okay. Um, number three for me, I would say Doug. I just absolutely love Doug. Doug, Doug was, uh, must-see TV Doug's for based me. on me. Do, 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 Love Doug. I used to quote Doug all the time. I remember my friend Mackenzie and I, it was like eighth grade or maybe seventh grade, but it was like almost summer break. And we would look at each other and be like, five days, five days. And we're like, count, you know, just like him and Skeeter did. Before Disney gave him a mustache and ruined it. Oh, my God. Why on earth they like recast a bunch of voices just when so they Doug... can do a movie to prop it on it it's yeah they just absolutely shit all over that se- that series <laughs> um i still want i it was okay like it was it was still doug but it wasn't doug it was okay um number two i am going to have to say number two nickelodeon show I am going to have to say Legends of the Hidden Temple. Oh, I didn't know we could do game shows. Anything. You could do anything. Um, I like Nick Arcade. That was oh, too. No, I do. I, w- I would daydream about being on those game shows. Uh, wow, I would, crazy kids. Yeah, I, I just wanted a shirt from them. I didn't really necessarily want to be on the shirt. I wanted to be able to have a chance to win some BK Ratch Techs or go to Space Camp. Double. Uh, d- double d- uh, so check this out. What My would bro- you do? I didn't mind, dude. What would you do? Ended every the same every episode. We're gonna get Mark. How many pies should we give him? And it was always five. <laughs> <laughs> always. 
Uh, my brother had a good friend named Josh who actually was on Double Dare. And nope. he had a pair of the Double Dare pants and he had a Double Dare shirt that he would wear when we... Yeah, he had the Double Dare outfit or whatever. And he would wear it sometimes when we go play baseball at the park or football or whatever. And uh, he's like, yeah, I was on Double Dare. And I was like, no, you weren't. <laughs> no way. You know, no, you weren't. And then lo and behold, he was. Saw him on an episode. Uh, it was crazy. I couldn't believe it. Because when you see that stuff as a kid, it's like, they might as well be movie stars. It's not, it ain't happening. No way. Can I tell you something funny and sad at the same time? Yes. I have dreams where I'm wrestling again and I'm working on Raw. And it's like my second time on there because like I remember back when I was wrestling, I was on there for a show. It's like uh, it's like I have this memory in my dreams that I was from an old dream of being on like WWF as a wrestler. For, that, that's like a reoccurring dream you have? It's a reoccurring dream that I've been on Raw before. And like I'm going back. Uh, yeah, it's weird. Uh, well, you know, so I'm not discounting what you just said. I, I'm agreeing with what you said. I have a reoccurring dream as well. And this, there's no punchline to this. I have this dream because when I graduated, I graduated high school with like, you, you needed to have like 187 credits or whatever it was. I had 187. I had no extra credits. Okay. I remember the last, my senior year, I had to pass every class. And previous to that, I had never done that uh, for the entire you know year. Um, I, I had to do it. So, which I did, I graduated on time with my class. Um, I didn't deserve to by any means because freshman year, you're supposed to have like 50 credits or whatever. By the end of the year, I think I had like 17. I think wow. I skipped, I skipped like 75% of freshman year. Mr. Um, Lippy kept you too busy. Yeah. Mr. I was Walter. I was almost held back. Uh, just like, but anyway, I'll have dreams where I don't have enough credits to graduate. I'm 38. I still have that dream every once in a while. It's crazy, isn't it? it, it's, it I, it's it's connected to your inner anxiety about something you actually care about, guaranteed. Yeah, yeah, definitely. it is for sure. Or or some unfulfilled dream, like you wanting to be on Raw. Like it's probably some unfulfilled, deep down desire that you still want to do, and your inner psyche like doesn't know how to process it or let it go. Yeah, yeah. or let it go because it's so intense. You know, yeah. you wanted it so bad. <clears throat> um, my number one show on Nickelodeon to end the show here to end the season premiere my number one Nickelodeon show I think it was number two or number three on Josh's list it's Salute Your Shorts all 27 glorious episodes are you afraid of the dark make your top five that top one. ten top ten for top sure, ten, sure yeah. and then if we're going top ten we'll throw in I loved uh, Ren and Stimpy I loved um, All Real Monsters I Avery loved Baker was good I, I think I that was a little towards my that was a little towards the end for me. I had uh, a little sister, so that's, cat dog, cat dog. Cat I like that. That was after my time too. That was made. That was invented by a fan. They won a contest, and they created create, create a Nicktoon. That's the one that won. Um, I have something to admit to end the show. I want to. I, I want to come clean. I've admitted a lot of stuff tonight. I'm going to come clean, Josh. All you good timers and slashaholics out there, I want to come. I want to come clean, and there's a very good chance I could be be arrested tonight. The Big Help, 1995, Nickelodeon Big Help. I have unfulfilled hours that I I donated that I pledged for the Big oh, Help thon. No. I still owe the Big Help a thon, 20 unworked hours, uh, and I feel really bad about it. And I'm, I want to come clean right now. Uh, you got anything you want to come clean with? Uh, oh crap. Uh, there's so much, man. I don't know. This one time I farted a bunch in homeroom and it didn't get arrested. <laughs> they thought it was this other kid and he got arrested. Oh. And he and he went to jail and they I beat him with nice sticks and he I didn't died. Say <laughs> yeah, they arrested this kid and he resisted because they thought he was farting, right? Man, so Josh Shot. <laughs> yeah, Josh is sitting next to him, just busting ass the whole time. And this poor kid, who, who was innocent, he did not fart. <laughs> he got beat to death with billy clubs because Josh would not come clean about it. Kid's there resisting. It he didn't fart. He's telling the truth, man. There it is. Josh let him die. That's about the same level of, of bad as, you know, me not, you know, raking my neighbor's lawn <laughs> or, t- you know, recycling, you know, for a couple hours. 
Anyway, Josh, let's end the show on that wonderful note there. All right. Hey, good timers, uh, Slash Hawks, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening to the season two premiere episode of Good Times with Alex and Ryan. I want to thank Josh LaRue for co-hosting tonight. It's always so much fun when I get to do anything created, creatively with him. And uh, Josh, tell the audience one more time where they can find you. Uh, I have to give them my physical address. Don't give them your physical address. Don't give them your Hulu account. Just tell them oh, where they can God. find you on YouTube. I'm on YouTube, the 80s Slasher Librarian Presents. Uh, just type in 80s Slasher Librarian, you'll find the ch- channel. A lot of great stuff on there. I think you'll enjoy it if you're a horror fan. Or if you just like bad movies and making fun of them. So check it out. Yeah, uh, and on that same note, uh, there may be a possibility that there isn't just horror content. Josh and I are kicking around the idea of uh, riffing Lifetime movies. We've talked yeah. about that, right? And a wrestling podcast. Wrestling podcast. And we are actually, we have a theme song, a professional theme song. We have the layout for a show. And we also have like the name and a format for a brand new spinoff. Uh, Slasher Piece Theater presents. Yeah, Slasher Piece Theater. Or, yeah, we, Slasher Piece Theater. We are, we are going to be reviewing horror movies and horror series. We're going to have guest, uh, guests come on, help us review the series. We're going to rank them. We're going to talk about all the production aspects of the movie, what we like about it, what we don't like about it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Be on the lookout for that. Uh, And I want to thank all you guys for coming back. It's been a three-month break. Uh, Thanks for hanging with us. Thanks for all the views. Thanks for all the streams, the downloads, why we weren't putting out new episodes. I I appreciate that more than you know. Ryan appreciates that more than you know. Josh, thank you as always. Uh, Tell the audience good night, Josh. Good night, Josh. (laughs) Mahalo, everybody. See you later. Saturday, April 22nd is Earth Day, but you still have the chance to honor the one and only planet we share. You can help the Earth any day and turn your big help pledge into action. From cleaning up your neighborhood to helping save a rainforest on the other side of the world. Why not put your energy into helping the Earth all year long? To find out how, visit the Earth Savers booth at your local Target store. Or write to The Big Help, PO Box 929, New York, New York, 10108. Don't forget to include your name, your age, and your address. Are you out there helping? Nickelodeon wants to know how. So write it down, snap some photos, or even tape yourself in action and send it to Big Helpers in Action, P.O. Box 929, New York, New York, 10108, or email the Big Help on Prodigy. Don't forget to include your name, age, and address. With your help, Nickelodeon can show the world how kids are making a big difference. Big Helpers in Action. From Nickelodeon. Big helpers in action. Big helpers in action. Big helpers in action. Big helpers in action. My name is Logan Carl, and I'm Jamie Lake County. We volunteer at St. Luke's Hospital. And there are thousands of different jobs you can do at the hospital. And you can make a lot of friends, like me and Logan. We just met each other, and we just, like, clicked right away and became friends. Yeah. <laughs> we really think that other kids should get involved, because it's a lot of fun. Bye. Big helpers in action. From Nickelodeon. Big helpers in action. Big helpers in action. Big helpers in action. Big helpers in action. Hi, my name is Virgie. Since I watched The Big Help, I've been volunteering my free time to younger children. Through my volunteering, I've made hundreds of younger friends. By making a difference in their lives, they've made a big difference in my life. I only volunteered 21 hours in your program, but I've helped for longer than that, and I hope to continue to help for years to come. Big helpers in action. From Nickelodeon.